Have you ever pondered the reasoning behind Ripple's decision to exclude XRP from its liquidity hub? By the way, there has been a significant drop in the value of Coinbase stock. Could it have been prevented by the XRP-powered pump? Hey guys, welcome back to Whiteboard Crypto Update. In today's video, we will talk about XRP's future. So be sure to stay focused as you surely don't want to miss out on this. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never miss any of our uploads. Please remember this is not a financial advice video. In a recent report released by digital asset investment firm CoinShares, it's revealed that larger investors are still showing interest in XRP. This cryptocurrency, which ranks fifth by market capitalization, has seen a continuous influx of funds for the 16th consecutive week. According to the report, assets under management for XRP products have surged by a staggering 127% since the start of 2023. This remarkable growth can be largely attributed to the positive developments in the ongoing legal battle between Ripple Labs and the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC. The legal saga began in December 2020 when the SEC filed a lawsuit against Ripple, seeking $1.33 billion in damages, alleging that XRP was used to sell unregistered securities. However, a federal district judge's partial decision clarified that XRP sales to ordinary investors were not classified as securities, providing hope for both investors and Ripple. Although institutional sales contracts totaling $728 million were considered unregistered security sales, this ruling was viewed favorably by the market as it set a precedent that digital currencies sold to retail clients do not fall under the securities category. This judgment played a crucial role in restoring trust in XRP and the broader cryptocurrency industry. Despite these positive developments, the SEC recently announced plans to appeal the federal judge's ruling, which dampened the bullish sentiment. Over the past three weeks, the price of XRP has exhibited a pattern known as a falling wedge, with bulls attempting to break above the upper trend line of the wedge in recent trading sessions. However, the lack of trading volume supporting this move has raised concerns about its sustainability. A strong close above the 50-period simple moving average SMA could alleviate this uncertainty and potentially trigger a rebound towards significant resistance levels at $0.72, $0.85, and $0.83. Conversely, a drop below long-term support at $0.54 might occur if the upper trend line of the wedge and the 50th SMA are not maintained. Of particular interest is XRP's recent resurgence against Bitcoin, sparking optimism among speculators. To put this movement in perspective, it's essential to examine historical context, specifically by comparing XRP and Bitcoin charts. XRP reached levels as high as 0.0000297 against Bitcoin in July, marking its highest values since December 2022. This remarkable surge can be attributed to the upward trend XRP experienced following Judge Cora's decision in the same month. Even after a subsequent dip against Bitcoin, XRP managed to reach 0.0002388 in July on a monthly basis, reclaiming the 20-day and 50-day SMAs. Notably, XRP had last achieved this feat against Bitcoin in March 2017 which triggered a remarkable rally that reached an all-time high of $3.80 in January 2018. During the previous rally, the price of XRP surged by an astounding 15,400% in less than a year. However, this all-time high was short-lived, as XRP subsequently dropped below the 20-day SMI in April and the 50-day SMI in June 2019. Given XRP's recent efforts to recapture these two SMAs and its successful maintenance above the 50-day SMA, it appears that a bullish run could be on the horizon. 
However, the community has raised various questions that require further clarification. One of the key questions revolves around the exclusion of XRP from Ripple's liquidity hub. Bill Morgan, a well-known attorney supportive of XRP, has raised concerns about Ripple's commercial activities. Morgan questioned why XRP couldn't be part of the liquidity hub alongside other digital assets, considering its clear regulatory position. He believes that XRP belongs on the list, especially now that the court has determined it's not a security. Another prominent figure in the XRP community, Mr. Humor, speculates that the liquidity hub may have been designed primarily to cater to the needs of institutions. Ripple's blog claims that the liquidity center facilitates the buying and selling of digital assets for U.S., Australian, and Brazilian enterprises, yet XRP remains absent without a clear explanation. Morgan suggests that while it makes sense for Ripple to exclude XRP for U.S.-based companies, it doesn't justify its absence for non-U.S. institutions in Australia and Brazil. Morgan also questions the source of liquidity pools, implying that they may not be derived from direct sales, but rather from XRP traded on exchanges. Additionally, he argues that XRP has a stronger regulatory standing compared to cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin Cash, all of which are supported by the Ripple liquidity hub. When a Twitter user raised the issue of Ripple providing XRP to institutions as a security contract, Morgan countered by pointing out that organizations receiving BTC, Ethereum, and Litecoin from Ripple likely did not expect any financial gain from Ripple's efforts. As of now, Ripple's chief technology officer has not provided an explanation for why XRP is not included among the digital assets supported by the Ripple liquidity hub. In the aftermath of the SEC's pro-XRP decision in its case against Ripple, Coinbase, one of the world's leading cryptocurrency exchanges, experienced a significant surge in the price of its stock. However, the reasons behind this sudden increase and its subsequent decline remain a subject of interest. The SEC's lawsuit against Ripple Labs served as a catalyst for this surge. The SEC alleged that XRP, as an unregistered security, violated federal securities laws. Given that classifying digital assets as securities would subject them to a more stringent regulatory framework, this case has broader implications for the entire cryptocurrency industry. The favorable ruling in favor of Ripple was interpreted as a sign of regulatory leniency toward other cryptocurrency firms, including Coinbase. Many in the community believe that if XRP, after years of widespread use, was not classified as a security, it could set a precedent protecting other digital assets and their token sales from similar government oversight. This, in turn, raised the possibility that other entities like Coinbase might have a stronger case against similar claims. However, the initial optimism following the Ripple decision was short-lived as Coinbase's stock quickly experienced losses. Despite the temporary excitement, concerns about the regulatory framework for cryptocurrency businesses persisted among investors. They came to realize that each case is unique and Ripple's success did not guarantee success for other crypto companies. Lastly, attorney John Deaton has re-emerged amid the ongoing legal disputes involving Ripple and XRP to address growing concerns. There is a recent theory that suggests XFRP transactions could be viewed primarily as securities. This theory gained traction as Judge Annalisa Torres considered the SEC's request for an interlocutory appeal. The SEC's decision to appeal Judge Torres' ruling regarding Ripple's public sales of XRP has led to the current legal situation. The regulatory agency is seeking to examine Ripple's regular XRP sales in secondary markets and other distributions, particularly in light of the judge's determination that these transactions do not constitute securities. The SEC argues that this decision presents significant legal contradictions, citing Judge Jed S. Rakoff's findings in a related SEC case. Judge Jed S. Rakoff specifically challenged Judge Torres's division of institutional and common XRP buyers, 
contending that the Howey test does not distinguish between these situations. Another pro-XRP lawyer, Bill Morgan, entered the discussion during this time. He provided evidence showing that it was the SEC that initially categorized Ripple's XRP sales into three groups, programmatic sales, institutional sales, and other distributions. Morgan clarified that Judge Torres simply applied the Howey test in line with the methodology provided by the SEC. Deaton responded with confidence, expressing belief that the appellate court would uphold Judge Torres's original ruling. Well, guys, that's all we have for you today. What are your thoughts on XRP? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, then be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Also, if you don't want to miss out on any new future videos, then be sure to click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification under this video so that you're notified the next time we upload a video on the latest XRP and cryptocurrency news. Until the next video comes out, you can watch our other videos about XRP or other cryptocurrencies. Thank you for watching, and we will see you again in the next video. Goodbye.